In this video, we're going to look at a question from our Computer Science Interview Question Bank 2024. This is a very common probability problem. It's very well known. It's really a simple case of an idea in probability called gambler's ruin. And so we see variations of this question asked across lots of subjects almost every year. So in this problem, Alice and Bob play a game. Alice starts with A points. Bob starts with B points. A fair coin is repeatedly tossed. If it lands on heads, Alice gives a point to Bob. And if it lands on tails, Bob gives a point to Alice. The game continues until someone's run out of points, at which stage that person is the loser and the other is the winner. So in part one, we're asked if we have a guess for what the answer might be based on intuition rather than calculation. Now, this is quite a common thing to be asked in probability problems. There's you know, we're not expected to magically know the answer, but it's a good way for us to show that we can suggest sensible things. Now, I would say the most sensible thing seems to be the proportion of the overall points that Alice has at the start. It has to be something like a ratio or a proportion of, of the variables in order that we ensure that we actually have something between zero and one and therefore a legitimate probability and although clearly having more points benefits Alice, it seems that what should matter is the proportion of the points that she starts with. Now, you know, maybe more generally, I might suspect that the answer might be a function of that proportion rather than outright that proportion. But it seems very likely that that proportion is going to have a role. So now we want to find the actual answer using probability. Now, this is a really difficult probabilistic situation, because if I start drawing a probability tree, points can go back and forth so many times. And indeed, really, the probability tree is infinite because there's no limit to how many times points could pass back and forth before someone runs out of points. I mean, you know, if you imagine starting each of them with a million points, it would take a ludicrously long time before anyone would run out, because on average... They're both giving points back to the other just as much as they're losing them. We'd need a crazily unlikely run for it to ever happen. So we have a very big probability tree. Now, what are the weaknesses of this problem? What might be nice ways in? Well, there's something of recursion to it. Remember that in computer science questions, they often like to ask questions that use recursive logic. What do I mean by recursion? Well, I mean that once a point has been handed from one player to the other, we're essentially then, from that point onwards, playing another version of the game, just with the starting allocation of points slightly different. So in particular, at the start of the game, Alice has A points. And then on that first round, there are two things that can happen. Alice can lose a point, or Alice can gain a point. So I'll just, for, for, for short, write A plus 1 and a minus one. But what I'm saying is, from that point, it's like the original version of the game, just where Alice had a plus one points to start and Bob had b minus one. Or here, it's like an original version of the game, just where uh, Alice had a minus one point and b, Bob had b plus one. So when, after one step, it's like you're in a slightly modified version of the starting game, that motivates a recursive line of attack. Now, here's what we can do. Let's let Pn be the probability that Alice wins, given that she currently has n points. So this is a nice thing to write down, because now, if I want to know the probability she wins from any given situation, I just write the appropriate value of n. What I'm trying to do is to find maybe a term-to-term -term rule, a recursion for this Pn. So... In other words, what I'm actually seeking as my overall answer is PA. Now, here is the big idea. In this situation, Alice currently has A plus one points. So the probability that Alice eventually wins is, by definition, P of, well, let's, let's write this more generally. Let's not even start from A. Let's do the tree starting from a position where Alice had N because then I'm going to get something that tells me about how Pn relates to the other, so I can be even more general. The probability that Alice eventually wins from that point 
is Pn plus 1 by definition of what we said the Ps were. And the probability that she eventually loses is 1 minus that from that position. But by the same logic, here, I can say probability that she eventually wins is Pn minus 1, and probability she eventually loses is 1 minus that. So in our tree, which is now finite, because we've collapsed all this infinite branching into these eventually branches that we were able to do by making this definition, this idea is really useful in interview probability. We can now see that I've just got these kind of winning outcomes. Now, we started our tree from a situation where Alice had endpoints. So by definition, if I add up all the winning outcomes in this tree, that's going to give me the probability Pn, right? Because she, we've, we've taken a probability tree starting from when she had endpoints. All the winning outcomes added up, their probabilities adding up, gives me the probability that she has won from a situation with endpoints. So that means that Pn has got to be equal to a half pm plus 1 plus a half pn minus 1. And this is brilliant news. So this is a recursion. So now we can relate p at one value to p at other values. Hopefully this will lead us where we need to be. Let's make pm plus 1 the subject because it's the one with the biggest index. So pm plus 1 is 2pn minus pn minus 1. And let's just see if we can spot a pattern if we start building up from an initial value. So I guess the first thing I can really plug in is n equals 1. Uh, I can't even do that, sorry, because if, well, I know that p0 is 0, right? Because if, if Alice has currently got no points, she's already lost. Um, so I can plug in, yeah, I can plug in n equals 1. If I plug in n equals 1, I'll see that p2 is 2p1. Now, I don't know what P1 is yet. Even p one's a bit complicated because even if Alice only starts with one point, she might gain a bunch of other points before the game ends. So let's leave that as P1 for now. We'll see if we can figure it out later. Let's try and get everything in terms of P1. P3 is going to be 2P2 minus P1, where I've just plugged N equals 2 in here. But 2P2 is 2 lots of 2P1. So this gives me 3P1. Let's do P4. I mean, the pattern might be obvious now, but let's do one more. So that's going to be 2P3 minus P2, which is 2 lots of 3P1 minus 2 lots of P1, which is 4P1. So at this point, we can simply spot the pattern. We can see that Pn is always n times P1. Now, we could prove that by induction. It wouldn't be difficult to do so. Um, in particular, we have a term to term rule, so we know how one relates to the others. Very easy proof by induction. It's less likely in the computer science version of this question you'd be asked to do so. Although if there was an equivalent question in mathematics, say, maybe the proof by induction could be an exercise they'd ask. We're not done because even if we just assert the pattern, we don't know what P1 is. Now, usually when we want to pin down unknowns from solving a term to term rule, we think about boundary values, special values that we know. Now, we know that P0 is 0, clearly, because then Alice is already lost. But that doesn't tell me anything, because if I plug n equals 0 in this equation, it's automatically true. It doesn't tell me about P1. But I also know that P of A plus B is 1, because if Alice has A plus B points, she's already got all the points and she's already 1. So that means that 1 is A plus B P1, where I've plugged n equals A plus B in there. That means that P1 is 1 over A plus B, and so Pn is n over A plus B. But hang on a minute, what was it we wanted? We wanted Pa, the probability that she wins from the start, and that is A over A plus B, which is exactly what intuition suggested would be the answer. So the main takeaway from this video should be the idea of recursive probability realizing that by defining a probability to mean that something happens from a certain point, you can set up these sorts of term to term rules and turn a probability problem into a sequences problem. And the sort of smoking gun that this technique will be useful is that after a move, you're essentially playing a different version of the same game.
So I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in further support with interview preparation, do take a look at our website, www.vantageadmissions.co.uk.